This morning, early, we got up to chapter 1, verse 28. We want to continue from that. And, and we hope that we can get up to chapter 2, maybe verse 15, if possible. This morning, we talked about the theme of Colossians. That theme was the mystery. It's found in verse 27. Let's read verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Notice, the mystery is Christ in you. The hope of glory. If Christ is not in you, you have no hope of glory. You have no hope of eternal life. You have no hope of forgiveness of sins. You have no hope of redemption. You have no hope of heaven itself. You have no hope of eternal life. But if you're saved and born again of God's Spirit, Jesus Christ lives in you. And that's the hope of glory. He will take you to glory. You will see His glory for all eternity. The glory He had with the Father before He came to the world. And we praise God for this hope. Now notice verse 28 and 29. Paul was made a minister of Christ. Let's read 28 and 29, please. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Notice verse 28. Whom he preaches. Paul was made a minister and he preached Christ. And he did two things as he preached. First, warning every man. You know the things that pastors must warn us about? Many evils and sins we must be warned about. This Greek word is an interesting word. Nuthetuntes. Good. From two words. Nous. That's the mind. Thentos. That's pudding. Pudding in mind. Placing it into our minds. It's in the present tense. It means continuing to put in mind. It means to warn. And the same word is used in Acts 20, verse 31. 
We studied that this morning in the men's leadership meeting. Where Paul warned them for three years. The second thing that preachers must do is teaching every man. Verse 21. Notice the method of teaching. Teaching in all wisdom. We must be wise in our teaching of the Word of God. Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. All right. Notice the goal of the teaching. In verse 28. To present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That includes the women also. Includes the women also. This word to present is interesting also. It's parastasomen. Comes from two words. Para, right alongside of. Stasoman, okay. to put or to place. To put or to place beside someone. Paul wanted to put and place every man perfect. He wanted to place him at the disposal of the Lord Jesus. That word perfect means brought to completion, fully developed, full grown. He doesn't want baby Christians. Baby Christians are for babies. When you're first saved, you are a babe in Christ. But Paul the preacher wanted to teach these Christians to be full grown up. Very important that we be full grown for the Lord. Notice in verse 29. Speaking of Christ, for whom he labors, Paul labors. This word for labor is kapo. It means arduous, hard toil. It means being weary and spent with labor. It means to faint from weariness. I think of the women cooking food for us here. They're laboring. Working hard. Paul worked hard for Christ. It's hard work working for Christ. He wants us to work hard for him. Notice also in verse 29. He says he's also striving. Agonizomenos. The English word agonize comes from here. It means to be a combatant, a fighter in public game. It means to strive or compete like an athlete. It means to fight. The word is used in Jude 1 3. It has a little preposition before it. 
It says, earnestly contend for the faith. Many preachers are not striving for the faith. Many preachers are not fighting the fight of faith. Paul was striving. And notice in verse 29, it was according to his working. Which worketh in him and in us mightily. God gives us power to fight for him. And our power and our strength must be his. Now look at the sixth main division of the book of Colossians. Colossians 2, verses 1 to 17. The walk of the Colossians and the person and work of Christ. First, let's look at the walk of the Colossians in verse 1. Let's read verse 1 together, please. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Notice Paul had an inner conflict in verse 1. Conflict is agona. It's a contest. It's the same word we had for striving. Apart. The people of the conflict were the Colossians. And those that lived in Laodicea. If you notice on your map, near Colossae is Laodicea. The pink sheet, the green sheets, I think we have extras. If you need some, you can get them after. Now, the conflict that he had was a peaceful conflict. He was concerned for these people who never saw him. I hope you're concerned for people that you never have seen either. I hope you pray for them. I hope you send some missionaries to them. They need Christ. And you must go. Notice the reason for, for the conflict in verse 2. Let's read verse 2 together, please. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. All right? Notice the reason for the conflict there are two reasons. The first reason, that their hearts might be comforted. Our hearts need comfort, do they not? And this word for comfort is an interesting word. Paraklethosin. It's from para, which means alongside of, and kaleo, which means to comfort or encourage. Or, go ahead. So it means to be cheered and comforted. Um, uh, 
And the Lord Jesus himself can comfort hearts. And then the second reason that he had conflict was that their hearts might be knit together. And this knit together means causing them to come together. Means to unite. Evidently, they were like a lot of our Baptist churches. Maybe they had division. They needed to unite in Christ. Three ways they had to unite. In verse 2, they had to unite in love. Second, they had to unite unto all the riches of the full assurance of understanding. That full assurance means full conviction. Some of them must have lacked conviction. They didn't have a firm persuasion in what they believed. Confidence and conviction, the theme of this conference. These Christians at Colossae needed that. And we need it too. The third thing that they had to be knit together about, in verse 2, to the acknowledging of the mystery, the mystery of God, the Father, and the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. This mystery we saw before is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Can we say that together? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Again, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Once more, please. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery. A mystery is a sacred, holy secret. And God has revealed that secret to us. It's no longer a mystery. No longer a secret. The Jews were the only ones that ever had God helping them in the Old Testament. Now he can take us Gentiles, heathen. And put Jesus Christ right in our bodies. And give us the hope of glory. Praise God for his unspeakable gift. Amen. Now notice in verse 3, we see the person of the Lord Jesus Christ again. This is the 11th uh, statement about the person of Jesus Christ. Can we read verse 3 together, please? In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Christ has hidden in himself all the treasures first of wisdom. <laughs> treasures is thesauroi. It's a, it's a precious deposit. <laughs> And we have the treasures of wisdom, first of all. Now, 
prophet, the twelfth statement of the person of the Lord Jesus, is also in verse 3. Christ has hidden in himself all the treasures of knowledge. Nobody knows more wisdom than he. Nobody knows more knowledge than he. No professor knows more wisdom or has more wisdom or knowledge than Jesus Christ. He knows everything. And he's all wise. What is the relation between wisdom and knowledge? Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. You want the illustration of a wise man and a fool? The wise man knows that it's pouring down rain. The fool knows that it's pouring down rain. The wise man knows enough to get out of the rain. To get out of the rain. The fool stays in the rain and gets all wet. Both had the same knowledge. One, one used it right, one used it wrong. We need to pray that God would give us wisdom to use our knowledge right. Now notice the walk of the Colossians. In verse 4 through 8. Can we read those verses together, please? And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of the faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Notice the walk of the Colossians. The walk means the way of life. How I take our steps, day by day. First, there's the danger of beguilement. He says, lest any man should beguile you. This makes a false reckoning of truth. It means deceiving somebody. Notice in verse 4, the beguilement comes with enticing words. Bifanologia. Bifanologia. It's persuasive speech. They're plausible, logical reasoning. But they're wrong. And they lead people astray from the truth. Now notice verse 5, the concern of Paul. Notice he's absent in the flesh but present in spirit. He'd never been there, but he was there in spirit, in his heart. Paul was a prisoner, you know, for three years. Two years in Caesarea, and one year in Rome. 
But notice he had joyful observations from a distance. He looked at two things. In verse 5, he beheld their order. God is a God of order. Let all things be done decently and in order. God is not the author of confusion. This word for order is toxin. It's from the word tasso. It means to arrange. It means order. Well regulated conduct. If you've seen soldiers marching in order, they have this orderliness. We use the English word tactics to explain military marching. Some of the terms that are used, right hand salute, right dress, right dress, uh, also to the rear, march, forward march, Column left, march. Column right, march. Company halt. These are commands and orders. The local churches must have order also. Paul rejoiced in this church's order. Second thing in verse 5. He looked at their steadfastness of their faith in Christ. That word steadfastness is a good word. Stereoma. That means what's solid and firm. Our faith in Christ must be solid and firm. It must be constant. This word stereos is used for stiff or hard food. Solid food, not liquid. Our faith must be like solid food, not liquid. It must not be weak like water. Notice in verse 6 and 7, the command to stand fast in Christ. Notice in verse 6, as they received Christ by faith, so they were to walk in Him. That word for walking is in the present tense. It means to keep on walking. You receive Christ by faith, walk by faith. Notice there were four ways they were to walk. In verse 7, they were to walk rooted in Him. That word for rooted is a good word also. It's from the verb rezao. It means to root or to cause to root. It's 
Okay. It means strengthened with roots. All right. It means set in concrete. Okay. We must continue to walk solidly for Christ. We must never renounce or denounce him or deny him. Many are denying him today. Peter denied him in yesterday. But Paul says, let's be rooted with roots. So the wind doesn't blow us over. Second, they were to be built up in him. This is like to build up a building. Don't stay on the foundation. Start climbing up, brick by brick by brick. Reach the roof. Build up in Christ. Third, they were to walk established in the faith. This verb established is a good word also. Bed by uh oh. That may sound strange to you, but your language sounds strange to me too. <laughs> so you give me strange words, I give you strange words. That means to confirm. That means to render constant and unwavering. And it should be as they were taught in verse 7. Fourth, they were to walk abounding in thanksgiving. Are you a thankful Christian? Are you continuing to walk with thanksgiving in your heart? Ten lepers were cleansed. One gave thanks to Christ. Are you a thankful leper? Or are you a thankless leper? God make us abounding in thanksgiving. Not just a little bit. But overflowing. We must learn to say thank you, Jesus. For all you've done. Thank you, Lord. For thy love and tender care. For thy word. Okay. And answered prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you, Lord. The fourth thing is a caution against humanism. In verse 8, we see there are deadly dangers in humanism. Paul says, beware. We've got to watch out for things. That word is blepete. It's a present imperative. It means continue, continue, continue to look out. It means to have an eye to. Beware. To shun. To, to shun or to 
Guard against. Okay. Ben ya di mo. Si ang ben ya di bote. Ben ya di ni ni oh ojo we ojo we ni ben ya di ojo we. Notice the things that they are to guard against. Do not do. Okay. They are there. They are came again. What you di mo ni di bote ya. In verse eight, Paul says we're to guard against the spoiling by man. All I want to man by man you go away. Mo man you 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 di ni ni di. The spoil means to carry off as a prey or booty. It means to steal the goods of a merchant. We've got to be careful a man doesn't steal Christ from us. There are four ways man will steal Christ from us. First, through philosophy. Philosophy means the love of wisdom. We have dangerous philosophies at work today. West Scott and Hort's dangerous philosophy is here today with us. West Scott and Hort on the new U.S. from whom I know Joe is that no one is here yet. They had a false philosophy of the Bible text of the New Testament. The Bible they have here, they want they would in a go up this road. We go there. What you would have? They don't bring what I will yet. Many other dangerous philosophies. Beware. Can you come in money? Come on, sit up for when you bet we that get yet in the room of what it. Second way that man spoils. We are so God in the on your. Verse eight: Through vain deceit. This means emptiness. It means to seduce us into error. They promise us a reward and then lead us astray. The third way to spoil us. After the tradition of men. This is not God's tradition; it's man's tradition. Man's tradition is many times false. Can you and you have from there? Also, I know about your family. Most say they have no good idea. You can you remember that you were? The tradition of taking girls to the bush is ah. false. When you are getting in, mommy, I say, "Come on, come on, we ain't getting you mad. I'm getting the party. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. So we're going to get you. Demonism also is false. No, no, no. Be a be a man. They come on, man. They are there. I'm going to say, Hallelujah. Amen. Some traditions are good. If it's God's tradition, the traditional Old Testament Hebrew text is good. The traditional Greek textus receptus is good. Both these traditional texts underlie our King James Bible. The fourth way of spoiling by man. Verse eight. After the rudiments of the world. The world can harm us. First John 2:15 says, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof." But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. So let's be cautious and beware. The only answer is found in verse eight. Continue after Christ. Stick to Him.
Walk closely with him. Stay in fellowship with him. Now let's look at the person of the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 9. Can we read that verse together, please? For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Notice, this is the 13th statement of the person of Christ. The fullness of deity. He is God himself in flesh. Bring on you Jehovah's Witnesses with this verse. Bring on your modernist apostates with this verse. They deny that Jesus Christ is God. Dwelling in flesh. One of the deadly dangers of the Westcott and Hort text in Greek is 1 Timothy 3.16. The Greek text clearly says, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. But they say, He appeared in a body. They take God right out of 1 Timothy 3.16. The heretics that wrote those false texts didn't believe in the deity of Christ. They didn't believe that God was manifest in the flesh. And all these new versions take out God manifest in the flesh. New American Standard Version. New American Standard Version. New International Version. International Version. New English Bible. English Bible. King James has it there. It belongs there. In Christ dwells all the persons of the God, the person of the Godhead bodily, all the fullness. Notice now in verse 10 the walk of the Colossians. Oh. We are ready to stop. Turn it back to Pastor. Alright, Pastor. 